Hey guys, <laughs> how's it going? Uh, it's great to be back live streaming. Boy, uh, I've missed you guys. And um, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of boomer moments today. Um, as you can see, this is a completely different space from where I'm usually live streaming from. Uh, this is uh, actually a friend of mine's studio. His name is uh, Eric. Eric is also here right now. Um, and he's uh, very kindly uh, lend me his studio. You can check out his YouTube in the uh, description below. Uh, he's actually uh, also a musician as well. Um, so, but all this stuff is in Chinese. So you guys get to practice your Mandarin um, when you go check out his stuff. His channel is Xiao Ha Ha. And it's awesome. It's a, a really fun. It combines a lot of uh, educational. It's actually pretty similar to mine or two sets. Um, and uh, has a lot of education, comedy, uh, classical music all tied together. So uh, that's, um, that's uh, what his channel is about. Anyway, um, so here we are. And uh, yeah, he actually has a really... As you can see, there's like multiple camera angles and everything. This is like, you know, I can, I can move here and the camera follows me. I can move here. The camera follows me here as well. Dang. <laughs> this, is a, this is pretty fancy. Uh, I'm not used to, <laughs> used to this. Um, but, uh, oh, is the audio delayed, guys? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot, I forgot to test the audio. I forgot to test the, uh, okay, one second, guys. Let's, let's do this right now. We're doing this live. We're going to test. So uh, let's see here. Mic one, is my audio delayed? Okay, audio is delayed. Uh, so that means that I should... Okay, wait. I'm going to do a live test. I'm going to clap, and then you guys tell me if the sound comes before or after the clap. One, two, three. So, tell me, uh, <laughs> audio is delayed. Let me think. It should be audio is delayed. That means, okay, that means mic, uh, let's see here. How about, how about right now? No. No, audio is too soon. The sound is before. Okay, so that means that I've got a, um, okay, so the audio came before. That means that this has to be... <clears throat> I have forgotten how to actually do all this stuff. This is so... Wow, there's music though. Okay. Such a boomer moment. My first live stream in like however many years, and this is uh, yeah, I totally forgot. Okay, let's let's just say let's just say this is gonna be a voiceover moment, and you know, you guys you guys can understand what I'm doing here. Um, but yeah, chat is really delayed. Everything's delayed. You know, but we're here together. Anyway, I wanted to. Uh, show you guys what I've been up to uh, during this time in Taiwan. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. I've been, uh, I've been connecting with the real world. And it's been, um, I would say it's, it's, it's been like, cause, you know, there was a moment when I was in the States and I was like basically for five months, five months, uh, I was just completely isolated. And I was doing a lot, you know, as you guys know, you know, we started the Discord together. We, uh, you know, I was, I did an album, Bach album. I um, also, you know, did a lot of YouTube. Um, now here in Taiwan, I've been, I've been uh, sort of doing other stuff, a lot of live stuff, a lot of catching up, you know, connecting with people in, um, you know, real, real, real life. But then I felt like, I don't know, a piece of me was missing, and that was you guys, um, because. I feel like, yeah, despite all the real life connection, I felt like, yeah, there was definitely something that I, I should focus on, um, which is, of course, staying connected with all of you out there. So um, this is something that I want to do more of. And now that I've finally, you know, uh, have access to this studio and, and uh, again, you know, thank you to Eric and his channel for providing me with this, uh, this opportunity. It's, um, you know, uh, this setup that 
we'll, we'll, we'll do more of these in, in, in the coming weeks. So uh, I'm really excited about that. I think that my next video will be, uh, we're going to try and get, you know, I've, I, I tried to improv. I tried to learn how to improv um, over uh, quarantine. But, um, yeah, that, 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 that didn't really go anywhere. Um, I would love to try and get together with a live musician and, and improv uh, more. So that's something that I'm uh, looking forward to, to trying out live in front of all of you. You know, classical musicians, we, we have this, this, this fear of improving, and, uh, you know, nothing like uh, trying to practice that in front of a group of people, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, how's the audio, guys? How is the audio? Is it, is, it, is it okay? Or is it like completely delayed? Is my mouth talking right now? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, I would like to show you a little bit of what I've been up to so you guys can check this out. Okay, so I'm going to be talking through this while we're uh, looking. So most of my stuff in Taiwan was food, as you probably all are aware. You know, more food. <clears throat> just a lot of me eating. This is, uh, yeah, it's just a lot of eating. Food has been good. I'm surprised that I haven't gained more weight because, uh, yeah, that's uh, it's been a, a problem. <laughs> but I also played some concerts as well, of course, um, and it was great to be playing in front of a live audience again. Uh, that was, for me, a really cool experience, um, you know. And of course, thank you to all of uh, the people who came, connecting with musicians as well live, you know, being able to just be with people of all ages and not, and actually have like human contact. That was really cool. Oh yeah, masterclass. That was also a really fun experience. Like all these things that was like, it was just so, made me so happy, you know? Oh yeah, and we also did a, um, a, a charity event uh, at my friend's restaurant. So that was really cool. Uh, I talked about um, you know, raising awareness for mental health, which I think is often not talked about enough, especially in uh, Asian culture, so that's, um, you know, that was, that was a really cool sort of experience as well. We had a lot of fun. Um, oh, yeah, and randomly I uh, played at like an, I, I needed to renew my visa, <laughs> so I, I like busted on my violin and was like, please let me stay here in Taiwan because I love it here, and um, so that was at the immigration uh, office. Oh, and then, uh, you know, as you all know, I'm really big on uh, music education, and so I went to uh, in the mountains to visit this school. It's called Erme Guozhong, and uh, basically it's a it's a middle school, high school, and I learned how to. I, I went, you know, to sort of try to inspire them with music education, but then they the kids taught me how to pour tea. How and 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 you think like, oh, I know how to make tea. Come on, who doesn't know how to make tea? But like, you know. I, it's actually kind of uh, complicated uh, because, like, I, you know, I thought that, like, oh, I knew how to do it, but there's, like, a, a, an actual, you know, like, thing. Like, they were like, no, you have, to, you have to go around this way first, clockwise. And, of course, I had to play for the kids as well um, after drinking all that delicious tea. Uh, <laughs> so that was, uh, I played some Bach. I, I, I shared my insights on what it is to be, a traveling musician, at least during normal times. Um, so that was really fun. Um, and so, you know, that was... Oh, and of course, Halloween came. I uh, got my makeup done professionally for the first time ever. That was, um, that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I was like going for a really scary look. But then I realized that actually I still had work. So, and the, the makeup artist only had time during the day. So I had to actually go to all my like rest of my days it dressed like that. Oh, and of course, you know, besides that, some more food, photos, pictures of me in the gym, trying to work off all that food, even going to the occasional live concert. Hank, Hank trying to eat his gift from his fans, and that's, you know, pretty much what I did. This was, this was, this has been my Taiwan, Taiwan time. So, uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. So that, that's, that's been what it's like in, 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 in Taiwan. Um, you know, so uh, that's, that's pretty much what I've been up to, guys. I, uh, I mean, there's some other stuff that also uh, that I've been up to as well. But, um, you know, for the most part, it's uh, food, 
uh, enjoying time with people and, um, you know, it's just that kind of, kind of stuff. I, I, practicing, practicing has been, has been on a, uh, I would say, um, as much as necessary kind of, kind of, you know, as much as necessary. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I like to say. A lot of kids have been asking me, how much, how many hours do you practice? And I'll be like, as much as necessary. So, you know, <laughs> my next uh, performance is actually this Saturday. It's, it's a, it's a kind of a cool performance. It's going to be at a film festival uh, here in Taiwan called the Go Golden Horse Film Festival. It's like called Jim Ma Jia. And uh, so I'm going to be playing this uh, Ennio Morricone uh, film composer from Cinema Paradiso. So it's going to be basically, you guys, this is like, you know, totally, don't, don't tell anybody about this. No, they announced it already. But um, it's, uh, it's the, the, the story is going to be like um, basically how we've all been missing the feeling of being you know, watching things live, being in the theaters, being in the movies, um, and also being in the concert halls, you know? So that's, uh, that's been a huge sort of, I think, missing piece in everyone. Uh, so that's something that I've, uh, I've really, yeah, I, I, when they asked me to do it, it was, I was like, hell yeah, I gotta do it. Um, so that would be something that's a little bit different um, from the usual stuff, but something that I'm still really excited for as well. Um, so yeah, okay, audio sync here, I know audio sync here is a problem, it's because this camera, the, the camera you saw before was actually uh, my MacBook camera, so that one I'd already fixed, but I didn't have time to test this camera, they're, they're fancy cameras, so, um, so, so I, you know, just, just bear with me for a second here while I, uh, I check out this there's really no way I can uh, I can test this right now because uh, I'd have to I'd have to do like a run a run a whole test. Let's see. I should delay the audio. Yeah, I should delay the audio here to let's say 300, and then here to zero. Okay, that's the best I can do. If any if anything comes up. Anything else comes up, just let me know. Like 30 seconds later, I'll see it in the chat. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, uh, what was I going to say? Next up, um, you know, so I recorded the Bach album. Uh, Bach has been a really, I think, important part of this year for me, um, you know, with the whole being alone. You know, solo Bach, it's pretty, um, it's pretty, I would say, a reflection of oneself, um, pretty good way to, to, to be in touch and reflect. And I think we've all had those moments. Um, so that's been really, really touching. Actually, I'm gonna, why don't I, why don't I give it a try? See, see how I'm, I'm sounding these days. You guys get to be the first ones to, to listen. I'm gonna have a little bit of a, okay, so let's, let's adjust these settings. All oh, right, here's a little, little, little Bach. Actually, I need to, I need to warm up a bit. Wow, I'm so nervous. First time playing in front of an audience. Okay, here we go. All right, and thanks for the donations, guys. <laughs>
All right. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks for the compliments. Um, so, so anyway, um, let's. Uh, that, that was that was Bach, Gavat, and Rondo. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Wow, why does it say there's zero concurrent views? That is a lie, because I see everyone in the chat. Oh, well, YouTube's bugging out again. Um, so, so anyway, hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed that. That was, um, you know, it's been a while. I think that concerts have been few and far in between. And uh, it's also made me appreciate a lot more. I think a lot of my colleagues... If you've if you've been you know following them um, on on social media, they've everyone's been saying the same thing, which is that uh, no matter which field you know you are in, uh, people have been appreciating I think more and more human live human interaction, and I think nothing quite has that uh, vibe you know that excitement when you're there in person, and so that's uh, that's been a pretty pretty cool thing uh, to be able to to uh, really enjoy and um, to feed off that energy. So you know, I've been really happy about that. But it's also been really exciting to you know, see you guys on, online and <laughs> that's actually quite a, that's also a different kind of energy and also really exciting too because you get immediate feedback and even as I'm playing, I'm kind of like checking out the chat. You know, a lot of us do that on Discord too. You're supposed to be in the practice room. You're supposed to be focusing, but in reality, you know, we're, 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 we're looking at the chat all the time. <laughs> but um, anyway, so um, I, uh, I wanted to, uh, you know, I'll, I'll play a little bit more later, but um, I want to get around to, we had a couple questions, and I also wanted this to be this kind of more casual thing. So if you guys have questions as well, welcome to ask them. Um, but we had a couple questions lined up already. Um, so let's take a look here. Um, okay. Uh, who? What is your opinion on sending very young kids to pre-college conservatories before they can make the decision themselves? Um, so let's see, pre-college conservatories. Hmm, I think that, um, you know, this is a good question, that if you're thinking about going to a conservatory at a, a pre-college, you know, at a young age, I would say, like, depends on which city, depends on if your parents are going with you. Um, it's, it's pretty... Um, it can be kind of distracting, you know. So before, uh, when I was, let's say, 15, uh, I, I, 16, when I was applying for uh, Curtis Institute of Music, where I ended up going to school, um, that, was, that was a um, sort of moment where I had to make that decision, right? I had to be like, okay, do I, do I apply for um, kind of pre-college or do I do just like try to look for... Uh, conservatories that sort of allow uh, a, a younger audience to a, a kind of younger um, student body and so Curtis is famous for that and I also actually applied for a different school uh, Manhattan School of Music um, most people don't know about that actually most people don't even know that I applied twice for Curtis because I didn't get in the first time but um, you know such is life and uh, you know one of these days I should make a biography that actually uh, I think uh, lists all my failures. I'm, I'm still working on it. There's been, I've definitely lost more competitions than I've won, so uh, stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, I would say that, you know, we, I did think about applying for pre-college Juilliard. That was something that um, I, was, I was thinking about. Um, sorry, that was a boomer moment. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> don't count my boomer moments. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, this is something that um, I think I've been, I've been pretty... I was thinking about um, back then, and I thought that New York might be a little bit too distracting um, for me, and so I opted for kind of to not apply for pre-college Juilliard at all because um, talking about it with my parents, you know, I wanted to sort of be more focused, and uh, I think that that New York would have been just too crazy, too crazy. But that's you know that's just for me, you know. Not everyone's like that. Um, so, oh, when do you consider yourself to be a professional at something? Um, you know what? We'll get back to this question. I want to see what your, you guys have uh, in terms of questions as well. So let's uh, open that up uh, to, let's see here. Let's see, let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, oops, I forgot to put my mix back to talk mode. Dang it, that's Boomer Moment like five. 
This is why you couldn't hear me. That's why my voice is really soft. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'll get used to this, guys. Just uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. I'll I'll um I'll I'll, I'll get used to this again. So um. Uh, okay, I saw a really good question. When is your shoulder rest coming out? That's uh, that will come out soon. Um, we're still working on it right now with COVID and everything. I mean, it was already tough just to get the merch out there, like the T-shirts and stuff. That was already like so tough, and a lot of countries place restrictions on postal services. It was uh, it was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be, but. Um, yeah, it was also a fun experience as well. A lot, I learned a lot. So, um, you know, before I get into anything else, I want to make sure that, you know, all of our customers are happy. And if you haven't checked it out yet, go check out Rachem Plus. That's uh, where all the uh, merch is, um, is happening. And if anything new is out, I'll be sure to announce it there as well. So, um, oh, Ray, did you drink water today? Yes, I have. I am drinking water right now. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions. Um, what's your favorite piece to play for a small audience, says Neo Envy? Um, my favorite piece to play for a small audience. Does this, uh, are we talking about this particular audience right now? <laughs> um, I would say that Bach. Bach is, I think, most intimate. And, uh, yeah, there's, for, for me, you know, that's Bach. Uh, I also uh, enjoy playing Vivaldi. Vivaldi is also really nice because um, you have a smaller orchestra on stage. Um, some of those, uh, those, those show pieces, you know, those, uh, like, yeah, yeah, those show pieces are also, uh, also really, really fun to play as well. And, uh. And so, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of pieces. Let's see, what else? Uh, smaller audience. Smaller audience per pieces. Oh, just more intimate stuff. Like, um, you know, I really enjoy playing, um, um, like, that kind of meditation. <laughs> that's a that's for for you guys uh, small audience piece um, what else what else what do you have um, if you have never learned the violin what other career would you have been pursuing by now asked by Navia Tai um, I used to think that I wanted to be a doctor but then after my sister uh, actually became a doctor hey Jennifer um, <laughs> Yeah, I see like how hard she has to work, um, especially you know during the pandemic. Uh, this year has been really tough for doctors, so and all healthcare professionals out there. So thank you to you all. Um, I would say that yeah, I, I I'm glad that I practiced more of the violin. <laughs> I am glad that you know um, I don't think I would have had the brains to be able to become a doctor. That's that's some serious. That's some that, yeah. That's that's tough stuff. So. Um, you know, so I, I think that if I wasn't a classical, like a, a, a violinist, I would probably want to do some stuff that's more related to uh, people. Just, you know, I think that for me, being a musician, what excites me the most, in addition to the music, is just seeing the impact that, um, that music makes on people. So I think I really enjoy that part about what I do, um, meeting people, uh, you know, hearing about how excited you guys are at a concert, you know, especially that's why for me, you know, greeting uh, the audience is so important because you get immediate feedback. It's kind of like what we're doing here with a live, with a, with a, with a live chat. Um, 
Oh, I see that Sienna, Sienna Lake uh, asked a question. What's the best way to support musicians right now? And are there any organizations or people that you can shout out during the video? That is a great, um, that is a great question. Um, right now, I think for a lot of musicians, we're, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a really tough time. I know a couple of personal friends who have actually temporarily switched uh, professions. Uh, you know, one of my, uh, my, my, my friends is uh, studying an account to be an accountant. Um, so, you know, she is uh, working hard on that. And we've got other people who are, who are, are just, you know, some are taking time off. Others who have families and stuff, yeah, they have to and rent to pay. It's 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 pretty tough. Um, I know that there is some. Uh, each orchestra usually has a musicians' fun going on right now, and uh, I think that you can you know in your local city you can go look that up and and, and inquire about that, and also uh, to make sure that you know how much of that money how much of your money is going where i think that that's important to know is it going you know directly to the musicians or you know are they taking a cut i think that that's something to consider as well i mean all organizations need some overhead to in order to run but you know it's just for you to know uh how much of your money is getting going out there to musicians um so yeah that's uh, that's a, that's a great question um tips oh let's say whoa chat just like went went to a different dimension um tips for teens who want to pick up an instrument um i would say that um hmm if you if you it, it's all about sort of managing expectations if you are okay with um sort of being being okay that's 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 sort of a, a good uh, sort of indication. If you're okay with being okay at the, uh, at the instrument, because I, I would say that, like, you know, um, if you pick up anything as a teen, it's, especially in terms of instrument, when other people, not because that you won't, you know, be good at it, it's because other people have had, like, 10 years ahead of you uh, in terms of learning, then uh, it's most likely that you'll always feel like you got a lot of catching up to do. And so I think that when, when that happens, you, you want to be sure that you manage your expectations and you know that, hey, this is, I, I, did, I do this because I, I really enjoy it and I want to learn something. You got to be patient with yourself. Uh, you have to also, yeah, manage your expectations in terms of, okay, this is, um, I love this and I might not do this as, as a profession, but I'm okay with that. So that's what I meant before by being okay, okay with being okay. You know, because a lot of us, we see what's out there on social media and we, we, we naturally, we start comparing. And I think that, you know, if I pick up something like, I don't know, a sport or something like chess right now, uh, or even as a teenager, I, you know, it would just be um, something that I would stay open-minded about and not necessarily be like, oh, this is what I have to do. So uh, be patient and be kind to yourself. That would be the, uh, the tips that I would say. Um, so, uh, let's see, uh, you know what, actually, um, one more question and I'll play a little bit because I saw earlier there was a, 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 a request for Chacon and I love, you know me, I love Bach and I'd always love to play you, not the whole entire thing because that's like 15 minutes, but uh, maybe like my, my favorite section there. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, hmm. You know what, let's go back to the other question because I really enjoyed that. Um, it was asked by Freyr here, when do you consider yourself to be a professional at something? Um, let's see. Uh, I think that, you know, some people say about, talk about the 10,000 hours uh, thing. And uh, that's something that I sort of have mixed feelings about because when do you ever consider yourself professional? I think that's sort of a title that other people put on you. Um, that's not something that I myself would ever be like, oh yes, I am a professional. Um, I guess... You, or you could say, hey, you're a professional as soon as you get your first paid gig, you know? So you could say that, like, you're a professional uh, when you have, like, your first wedding gig or your first, I don't know, like, first whatever gig. It's, it's, uh, it's when you want to be, when you feel like you're ready. It took me a while, it took myself a while to feel like I was a professional um, at the violin. I, I, I think that it's so much of it is, like, a very gray area. And um, especially because, you know, uh, 
you enjoy it so much, and so and you've always been performing, and so there's no real difference between performing for your friends and family, and then or like teachers studio, and then all the way to kind of a concert, but not yet paid concert, and then to a paid concert, but kind of not really like on the same level as the professionals out there in front of the org, like so. You know, there's, there's, or you maybe you win a competition and get to play with the orchestra. Are you really, are you, are you a professional then? You know, it's just a, it's just a title that when you're ready for it, uh, you'll know it. You'll know it. And uh, so, oh yeah, we're going to do some Chacon and, uh, and I, and I was going to like, I, I was going to play my favorite part of the Chacon. So let me uh, actually make sure the sound's not too loud. <laughs> good <laughs> um, that was uh yeah that's my that's my one of my favorite parts in the chacon um, so yeah hope you guys enjoyed that um, we have some time for a few more questions before um, before uh, my time's up here for today but you know like I said we're gonna have a lot of opportunity to uh, I think you know play around with uh, uh, Eric and uh, oh, there's also he has a, has a YouTube partner called Jiang Lao Si, which makes uh, it, it, it's the the uh, in Chinese it's just Jiang Lao Si. Lao Si means teacher, so she's a pianist, or, um, and um, and the two of them use the, uh, have like a a, a duo um, uh, YouTube channel. So that's uh, something for you guys to check out. Um, so okay, we got time for a few more questions. Um, Let's see here. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. David Dong asking the real questions here. Are DMAs overrated? Doctor of Musics. Mm, I don't know. Uh, do you guys have DMAs? No? No, doctorate? Doctorate? Yeah. You have a doctorate? Yeah. Oh, you have doctorate? You both have doctorates? No, no, we're not doctorate. Oh, okay. No, okay. So I was just asking uh, Eric, who's over there. <laughs> He's helping me manage the sound. Um, that if they have doctors, I don't have a doctor. I don't even have a master's. Um, so you know, uh, but um, I think that if you're going into teaching, though, it is useful. So I have heard that uh, everyone who wants a teaching position these days um, needs to have a doctorate. I think that that is something that uh, is is sort of commonplace just because there are so many people with doctorates and when you apply for a university unless you've won major competitions or you know uh, you have like a major major career uh, or may maybe like a high uh, like an orchestral position uh, out there I think it's um you know then they'll look at your your uh, your degrees 
um, from from your from your education. I think that that is the time when you when that doctorate will come in handy. Or if you, let's say you're both in a top level orchestra and one one of you has a doctorate, the other one doesn't. Maybe that would be just just the tipping edge. I think it matters less then. But um, yeah, the, the, that's our doctorates overrated. I don't know. Depends on which situation and when you need it. Um, let's see. Uh, Joshua Morden has. Do you have your wisdom teeth? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Actually, okay, I'm not gonna show. You. Okay. How far is that zoom on that camera? That can, that zoom can be very far. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, that's that's enough. That's enough. We can't go to another one. We can't be so close. Um, would you ever considering going back for additional degrees and teach? Um. I think that at my at this point, I I love teaching, and uh, as you all know, I do a lot of that. Um, and uh, but but I think that getting going back to school for 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 probably probably <laughs> I think that's done for me. Um, so uh, let's see let's see. Uh, oh, Beethoven. What is your favorite Beethoven sonata? Um, my favorite Beethoven sonata. Would probably be the Kreutzer, number nine.、Uh, it's also one of the longest,、uh, most difficult one, especially for pianists out there.、Uh, it's the one that starts with this incredibly difficult violin solo. <laughs> And this this part, I, it's like I always have to practice a lot. But then, and the third movement、uh, is great because it has kind of this like. You know, like Sibelius has like dum ba da dum ba da da. It has this galloping. And then,、um, yeah. So, so that's that's it's a really fun piece to play.、Uh, very difficult though. Very difficult.、Um, and so, okay, time for、uh, let's say three more questions. Three more questions, and then. Uh, I'll I'll let you guys know what's in for next time.、Um, let's see.、Uh, can you play Sibelius, please? Oh, yeah, guys. You know,、um, I know that、uh, Eddie's Sibelius is coming up. So、um, this is、uh, this is going to be it, Sibelius is tough. Sibelius is tough, and I haven't practiced Sibelius in a long time. But I wish Eddie best of wishes for his upcoming. Sibelius live stream. <laughs> I'll be watching, <laughs> but、um, you know that's gonna be that's gonna be a, a lot of fun. So okay, here's a little Sibelius. So、oh, let's do orchestra. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Okay, one second. Okay. That's such a such an awesome piece,、um, but yeah, that's、uh, there's some Sibelius. The third movement is pretty tough.、Uh, those thirds. The... Oh yeah, there we go. Oh gosh. <laughs>
thanks, thanks, thanks to John also over there who is providing the uh, the support. We got to do it. We're gonna we're gonna do some. Also, we're gonna do some uh, live streams together in the future. Uh, actually, probably next week. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna it's gonna be our first live stream together, and that'll be kind of sort of in half English, half Chinese. So uh, you guys get to practice your Chinese. I'll get to practice my Mandarin as well. Um, but um, that'll be that'll be a lot of fun and. Also, uh, like I said before, I um, definitely want to try improv, uh, jazz improv. Uh, so, you know, I think a lot of us out there as classical musicians uh, wish we could improv, but we all suck at it. So, I mean, I'm not going to speak on, on behalf of everybody, but most classical musicians that I meet are like, yeah, I don't know how to improv, but we're terrified of it. So um, why not step outside my comfort zone and just you know, try it live. <laughs> so I've never actually gotten a single jazz, like, improv lesson ever in my life. So I don't even know how that's going to sound. I'm probably going to, you know, just be really bad at it. But hey, if, if, if I'm willing to do it, I think that everyone should give it a shot at one point. So we can all sort of learn together. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I think that uh, I also spoke with uh, Eric about perhaps doing some cooking stuff since I love eating so much so we're gonna do that a little bit of that as well um, so uh, let's 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 try that I mean let's try everything we've uh, uh, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun uh, in the upcoming weeks so be sure to check that out but um, anyway I think that's all we have time for today so thank you so much for um, you know sort of just being uh, here and uh, also supporting me for my first live stream back, it's been a while, but it's also been a lot of fun to be able to uh, just sort of be here with everyone and see you all in the chat. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really awesome. So thank you so much, and uh, I'll see you again soon. I'll be announcing the live streams of my Discord, so be sure to uh, check out the link. It's in the description below. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you guys again. All right, see ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> see you guys.
what? Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, wait, where's the, where's the audio? Oh, yeah, audio. no, uh, no, 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 I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, wanted to thank you guys again. Uh, this is Eric here. Hello. This is Jiang Laosi. Hi. And uh, these are uh, friends of mine here who very kindly let me use their studio. So, um, all the upcoming stuff, be sure to check out their, their YouTube again. Um, it's in the description below. And, yeah, thanks, and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs>